Hello, it is I, once again, the Bruce Wayne of Azure Lane, back at it again for yet another Azure Lane Faction Fleet update, of which I am incredibly, incredibly excited to do after this year. Um, my Faction Fleets have, in fact, changed since my last video. Um, and I think it's no surprise, as you can see here, the Eagle Union Faction Fleet obviously does include Laffy 2, who is 100% completely broken. I love this little ship. And then the next is Guam, who is, I think, overall a better main tank than Anchorage. So here is the thing about uh, my faction fleets. I focus on creating well-rounded faction fleets designed to handle virtually any situation very well. And I got to say, um, as far as my Eagle Union fleet goes, this has been the biggest improvement uh, since, well, actually, since that awesome event happened during Christmas. So um, what has changed about my Eagle Union fleet? Um, now I use Kearsarge also. Kearsarge, Guam, and, well, actually, here's another thing. Um, I'll just show you how I have them equipped right away. So one thing I've found is that, it, first of all, if you give Helena the SG radar, it times her, uh, it times Kearsarge's and New Jersey's barrages perfectly to it if you give them either the fire control radar or the Admiralty fire control tape. Um, having said that, yeah, you get these two nice, and I uh, still use the Mark 7, even though I found that during PvP, it is better to use the twin 457mm. Uh, but I also have Kearsarge equipped primarily with battleship gear, and um, someone was mentioning this to me earlier um, during one of the streams. They said that Kearsarge is best equipped as a battleship. And I started trying to figure out ways I could equip her in a, that blended both her fighters and her main gun in some way, it gave them both some good capability. And I found you probably just shouldn't go that way. If you equip her as a battleship, she does way more damage. So I equipped her like this and she still does. Um, she does actually tremendous damage. It's, I would say, roughly on par with New Jersey most of the time, and she can exceed even Yorktown 2 on some rare occasions. Actually, I would say on some armor types, really. If it's light armor, Yorktown 2 is going to get the win on it. <clears throat> anyway, so this is how I have my Yorktown 2 equipped. And Yorktown 2, although um, she gets this very nice air raid assistance built-in buff from Kearsarge, uh, her airstrike won't perfectly sync up with Helena's if you have it set up like this, but that's okay because she still does tremendous. It, you probably get the first one in with um, Helena's radar scan skill if, I would say if it activates, which is that that's the issue with using Helena is that sometimes it's temperamental. But yeah, um, on the up note, I have Guam equipped for what I believe works for maximum surface damage. If someone has a better loadout, um, let me know, but I built her mostly survivability in her AUG slots, but um, I do believe it's better to use either this gun or the French gun that gives uh, 35 firepower because the efficiency on this is low anyway. So uh, this gun itself will not do tremendous damage, but this gun absolutely will do very good damage. So I would say focus more on increasing the damage of this gun. Um, I also gave her accuracy, um, or the uh, Bofors stag, because that does help her accuracy a little bit. Ultimately, um, as I have said before, with Guam, you can choose between either the Lance or the Greatsword for her uh, augment, but um, she already has the best accuracy out of the large cruisers, and AA is something she has in so much abundance, she doesn't even really need to add more to it. On the other hand, she always, always, always benefits from firepower, um, but she has no torpedo. So torpedo delivers absolutely nothing to her. But the real question here is, 
Which do you need more, the accuracy from the lance or the firepower from the greatsword? I believe firepower. Um, she has a skill that even boosts her accuracy. So she is well stocked on accuracy. Increasing her firepower will absolutely deliver more damage. Having said that, moving on to... I don't think I need to go over Helena in depth. Um, Laffy 2, which I gotta say... Um, yeah, this destroyer is busted. <laughs> so, um, I did equip her with the twin 100 millimeter. This, she just does the best. This is the best destroyer gun, really. And she does the best with this gun. Um, it'll launch her all out assault more, which is also quite nice. Uh, having said that, the best equipment to equip to any gun focused destroyer is the Hollow Live Gamer's Mark and the Team Emblem. Um, this will give her tremendous amounts of health while also giving her a 3% damage increase, and this covers both her main gun, her torpedoes, and her barrages and skills. So, um, yeah, Laffy, and I also gave her um, primarily this gun because she her AA is also something she has in abundance. So if I wanna draw more surface damage from her, I would wanna increase her firepower even further with this. So, and that works. Um, torpedo depends on what situation you're in, but this is quite good for every situation. Um, having said that, I did go the more firepower route using the dual swords. Um, I guess you actually could do okay equipping her with a hammer, but I don't think she really needs accuracy that much, and she is more of a gun focused destroyer, so I, I leaned more on the gun focused side. Um, yeah. Laffy 2, one of the most game-changing ships ever introduced. Uh, this really was the prize crown jewel of the uh, USS event. So, um, yeah. Highly, highly recommended. <laughs> and now, um, as far as me officers go, uh, this is my current me officer. I've still used the same me officer from last time, my antenna me officer, which does have the mountains tenacity skill, which I mean, when you combine this with New Jersey skill, that is still an 8% damage reduction across the board, which is ridiculously good. Um, yeah, Helena and Guam benefit from this a little bit. Uh, here's the thing. Um, this is beneficial for uh mainly yorktown too but if i wanted to switch her out with independence and switch out helena with uh columbia or any other cleveland that also would benefit mainly that would also benefit mainly independence um i did get the eagle union buff and this increases reload for all battleships and uh, battle cruisers and aviation battleships on the other hand what i put in the other slot is this drake me officer right here because I seriously think this is probably the... Um, here's the thing. You could probably make a better Meow Officer than this. But this is the best Meow Officer uh, any player will see for a very long time. <laughs> uh, unless you are outrageously lucky with your Meow Officers. But um, yeah, this thing right here... Um, yeah, nice little buff for uh, Laffy 2. But on top of that, you get Destiny. You get Combat Ready, which no other, uh, no other, actually, Meow Officer can even get this buff. But it's great for battleships uh, and battle cruisers. And then you get this little thing right here, which actually does benefit aviation battleships. And then Flames Aggression, which is the most valuable Meow Officer skill that there is. So if you have Drake, Raise this Meow Officer up to max. If you don't have any Meow Officer better than this, I would encourage you to cannibalize other Meow Officers into build, um, building up Drake. That Meow Officer is out, you know, outstanding. Dang. Anyway, um, moving on to my new Royal Navy Faction Fleet. So here's the thing. Last time I had Vanguard here, but um, this fleet right here is what got me through World 
14 and world 15 and i gotta say um i they're primarily a mobbing fleet and they are the best at what they do so um both of these healers will heal your vanguard non-stop and basically make them immortal uh perseus and unicorn working together and unicorn is excellent at anti-sub so i would encourage using her anti-sub on the other hand okay perseus would be a good anti-subber as well but i i prefer having reload on uh or you know the homing beacon on her um also with hms hood um uh, this augment i would say changed just how good she is this is a insanely powerful augment her skill will activate a hundred percent of the time now and because she has this awesome boost for reload by 40 percent and keep in mind when your other uh capital ships are unicorn and perseus upping their reload means they heal insanely fast so because their heals are launched off their airstrikes so every airstrike is an awesome heal reload that reload just speeds that up to a ridiculous amount so now for van for the vanguard i use plymouth who will also buff uh hms hood with her skill excellent battleship buffer um having said that i would say yeah she is still as of now the best light cruiser in the game she can serve as a main tank she does some of the highest damage of any vanguard in the game with probably i would say only hindenburg out damaging her out and on top of that um yeah her skills are excellent for support excellent for anti-air excellent she's she's a, a, a outstanding light cruiser in all areas also bologna gives air raid assistance which benefits both perseus and unicorn um this skill is just okay but what you really want her for is air raid assistance and also um Scylla, who i was also has a very good carrier buff um and an anti-air buff this ship is actually very very good for any anti-air content or any um well actually anything involving buffing carriers really so yeah this ship i would say the, this fleet right here is my best mobbing fleet so far and they got me through some insanely hard stuff in world 15. shout out to the royal navy fleet by the way and my meow officers also have not changed i've still used these same two me officers which um you know they got four serenity uh I, which I was surprised at how much I've used this for the anti-subbing ability. Yeah. On top of that, I still have this Lime Meowficer. Um, I have found no reason to change this Meowficer out. Also has four Serenity, by the way. Great for anti-subbing. Yeah. And as the Royal Navy buff, they both have the Royal Navy buff. Which is... Yeah, that's... These two Meowficers got me through some hard mobbing stuff having said that moving on to my new iron blood fleet now in the back i used to have avp in place of fdg i prefer fdg post fate simulation um also i should i should tell you this i do not have uvh she is the one ur i missed which i intend on fixing that this rerun I have the cubes, I have the gold. I'm getting me a UVH this coming rerun. Anyway, um, now the front line, I've only switched out and changed Hindenburg, because I used to have Prince Heinrich here, because Prince Heinrich was previously the best heavy cruiser for the Iron Blood um, when it comes to delivering, solely delivering damage. Um, now Hindenburg is I think the highest Vanguard damage dealer in the game now. I do not have my Hindenburg up to Dev 30 yet. It's going to be a slow grind, but I will definitely get my Hindenburg up to Dev 30. Um, having said that, Emden with her massive buff to firepower for all Iron Blood ships, 
that 10 percent firepower uh boost to all you know iron blood ships is actually still highly highly recommended and um you can equip her with i would say um this gun she does exceptionally exceptionally well with um i gave her this because it also gives her some anti-air uh, but on top of that these are both he guns and um if i want to keep a fire going that was started by either bismarck 2 or fdg uh you will want he guns to uh keep the fire running on an enemy after it's been started so that works out quite well um, Hindenburg, like I said, I don't have her to Dev 30 yet, but I think in all honesty, if you can get two of these guns and you, um, this will be the best for most situations to put on her, um, in, in her two gun slots. Yeah. Um, I did give her this because, you know, two heavy cruisers plus Emden in a Vanguard. Um, this Vanguard is going to be slow. In fact, it might be best to put a steam engine boiler, or not steam engine boiler, the um, the advanced boiler on Emden in one slot, because um, that'll help your speed even further, and if speed is a problem. Um, as of right now, a gear, who is the only large cruiser that actually has a clear benefit and no drawbacks from the VH armor plating, um, I still use this on her. Uh, you could also put the beaver tag plus this on her and it will increase her survivability uh, outstandingly, but I'm using that on Guam right now. So it is what it is. Um, Graf Zeppelin, who I have kept mainly because um, this 15% damage reduction is the closest thing Iron Blood has to a solid healer, even though it's not a heal. Um, yeah, the other, yeah, this is this is really the the best cl closest thing you'll get, really. Um, on top of that, if you equip um, her two dive bomber slot slots with prototype ten rise, she actually still does an insane amount of damage that makes her worth keeping in the fleet, despite how old she is. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this augment also is one of the best most powerful augments any ship in the game has gotten um yeah this augment it it does it pretty much brought her right back up to spec and then also the introduction of the fuck wolf 190 uh carrier based rocket fighter also allows her to go after heavy armor targets and any well any armor type targets really so it's this whole thing um i don't know she's she's a ship with a skill set that has withstood the test of time once she got a nice augment have, have mind you but i mean still yeah graf zeppelin you know staying up there with the with the elites of azure lane straight from the beginning this ship is special shout out to graf zeppelin by the way um now fdg post fate simulation um i gotta say uh it did improve her quite a bit but i would say it's like um it wasn't overall like exceedingly that much of an improvement but i mean when it comes down to it the fact we have bismarck 2 now who uh did not exist the last time i did a faction fleet video uh, Bismarck 2 is absolutely outrageously powerful. Um, yeah, she has all, she has uh, quite a nice buff, quite nice damage. Um, I would say this though, um, I was kind of hoping she would have a carrier buff, but the fact that she buffs firepower means she's just better sorted with battleships. Um, in fact, I would say this. Uh, when I do get Ulrich von Utten, uh, I do believe she could replace Graf Zeppelin if I'm solely going for damage. But when it comes down to it, um, Graf Zeppelin's skill overall keeps your um, is a overall better skill to have. And you know her damage her damage is still good with the new planes. So I gotta say. Um, Iron Blood got, I would say, the biggest leap in terms of performance this year 
Um, FDG's Fate Simulation, uh, Bismarck 2 coming into the game, and then Hindenburg. Yeah. Out of, out of all the fleets, I think Iron Blood got the biggest leap. Um, but I also think it's possible Eagle Union. I haven't tested. I haven't tested my Eagle Union fleet in this configuration fully. So it's possible Eagle Union might be on par or better in terms of the performance, you know, jump that they have had. Yeah. Overall, I'm impressed with Iron Blood. I like, um, yeah. Yeah, Iron Blood. Iron Blood got a nice, nice boost this year, and I'm anticipating they're probably going to get another one. I'm anticipating it just because it's popular. They they the one of they are the most popular fleet faction on uh global. So invest in Iron Blood. If it was a stock, I'd jump in there. Um having said that, uh my Russian fleet did not change at all. Um I still use the same fleet. They got no uh I would say no new ships that were um after Varishalov, really they got no new ships that were like game changing or anything. So uh my Russian fleet has not changed at all. I just decided to do a French fleet this time. So the French fleet got one major, and to be the most massive boost actually is Marsilis, because she is a vanguard faction fleet buffing ship. So, um, which is unheard of because now the French fleet has not one, but two faction fleet buffing ships. So uh, Marsilis, um, increases this ship's firepower accuracy 15%. While this ship is afloat, increases your Iris Libre and Vice Dominion ships firepower torpedo AVI reload by 8% and every 20 seconds restores 1% of those ships max HP. That is an insanely busted faction buff. And it's on a Vanguard ship. That is insanely busted for a, a, like especially for a fleet that already has its faction leader so dang um her other skill uh which is a speed boost and eva boost and mainly a survivability boost is also keeps her highly survivable um and on top of that her stats on their own are actually still very good so uh marsilis is the game changer for the french fleet um Having said that, for the Vanguard, um, I still have not finished leveling up Lemars. Um, other ships that brought better fleet tech took priority. Um, having said that, though, for a French fleet, um, this skill where she dramatically increases the damage of your whole fleet if your front Vanguard consists of only French ships is still, to me, an incredibly powerful buff, considering... That, you know, if we have Brest in your... I still do it. My goodness. Uh, we Considering we have Brest in the front, in the as the main tank, Brest as the main tank. Why does that even sound bad to me? <laughs> Brest as the main tank. Okay. Um, before I got, you know, I digress. Anyway, having said that, Richelieu is still uh, clearly the best for the flagship. And the... Uh, Faction fleet buff she delivers stacks on top of Marsilis, which to me delivers great capability. Um, on the other hand, you go over here and you have Clement Sue, who I also have not quite finished developing. Um, she primarily benefits from Vichia Dominion ships, but you only need one um, in the Vanguard to activate her skill. So guess who Lamars is? Lamars is a Vichia Dominion ship, so she is perfect for activating Clement Sue's skill. On the other hand, um, she does deal quite an awesome amount of damage. And she has, her damage has a very good debuff on its own. But I would say this, this, this gun right here is the only real good uh, French light cruiser gun that you can add that will be good for activating her skill. So I would keep that. Um, yeah. 
Clemenceau, excellent damage dealer, benefits from a good faction buff. And on top of that, yeah, syncs very well with Richelieu. Um, having said that, for most situations, I would use Pain Leve, mainly because um, Pain Leve is a very solid aircraft carrier. She is a healer, but um, she also increases the flagship's damage dealt by 8%. And um, your front Vanguard ship's damage taken, which is breast in this case, takes less damage, but she also heals. Yeah. Um, this is actually quite, quite good for a, uh, like for a well-rounded French fleet, because you can mob with this fleet, but you could also handle quite a few bosses with this fleet. So yeah. Um, I will also go on now to my Japanese fleet. Um, so this is my current Japanese fleet setup. Um, I actually kept the back line the exact same, mainly because um, Shinano and Hakuryu working together is still the best carrier setup for damage on heavy armor. They're, they're the two queens of aircraft carrier wrecking heavy armor and then musashi herself is the highest heavy armor damage dealing ship in the game still so this back line right here excellent for crushing heavy armor um having said that uh i am still disappointed with azuma's actual damage delivered so i use unzen as a main tank but um, when I use Unzen, I do give her a full survivability build. Um, overall, she does greatly do, I would say she does, she does a solid amount of damage and she's a decent main tank, but um, her tankiness falls well behind the other faction fleet main tanks tankiness. Um, but yeah, so her her cross fleet buff i mean that's good but i'm trying to look for buffs for the fleet that she's in you know like this is supposed to be a solely about the faction fleet you're actively using so i would say she herself does great damage kazagumo is still uh the best vanguard carrier buffing uh ship kazagumo's damage herself is also outstanding because her torpedo damage is in it, it's a very it's a very decent amount of torpedo for um, a destroyer to have. She has very high torpedo rating, and then um, on top of that, she has her own buff for dealing more damage with torpedoes. So I have seen no reason to switch out Kazagumo. Um, having said that, I also ha have seen no reason to switch out Shimakaze because. Um, her damage is still broke. You know, her, like, this This is the other broken destroyer in Azure Lane, still. And nothing has, nothing has convinced me that that's going away anytime soon. Yeah, so I would, I would say Shimakaze, keep her in your faction fleet for the Empire of Japan. Um, on the other hand, yeah, this is just a fleet I'm building. So um, here's the thing. I Someone wanted to ask to see my uh, PVP fleet because my PVP fleet did change. So for PVP, I now use this fleet setup right here. Although sometimes I may switch uh, Columbia and having her in the middle. She is the squishiest out of these, but even then she's a Cleveland. So she's her survivability is still pretty tough. Anyway. So this is my current uh, faction fleet for PvP. And I gotta say, um, so far I actually was able to take down one of the, like the meta PvP faction fleet that is currently going around. I was able to take it down once. Um, I'm gonna try and do it again and then stream it. Um, I don't actually have, so another thing is when I use independence here, I have a Wyvern at plus 13 here and an F6F rocket Hellcat here because she absolutely destroys the Vanguard usually before the fight, like right at the beginning of the fight. 
when I have that. And then I equip New Jersey and Kearsarge with twin 457 millimeters. Um, and that gets them an early shot. And New Jersey survivability buff, um, using the flagship cover skill from Columbia, which also buffs, um, and she also has that synergy with independence. Um, that brings New Jersey's survivability incredibly high. So, yeah, this is my current faction fleet uh, for PvP. I look forward to seeing some of you in PvP, as I know one player trounced my last faction fleet, and I'm looking to see if I could find them again. Yeah, MGT, so, you know, it was probably you, wasn't it? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's my current fleet setup, and I look forward to playing and streaming more Azure Lane with you. Anyway, um, that is all I have for you today, guys. As always, I wish you a farewell and following seas, a happy new year, and if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>